Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in another episode of Future Hour. And today we're so honored and excited to have Mr. Lars Rinnen, who is the CEO of Amesto NextBridge. And him personally and his company are the driving force in the AI world. And just so honored to have you here. Thanks. It's a great honor to be here. Thank you so much for being here. So, would you mind tell us a little bit of how did you get into the AI space? Well, um, I have been working with, you know, getting insight from data all my career. But it started with small data, uh, simple data, data from databases. Uh, and then it kind of just evolved into what we used to call big data, and what is now called, you know, AI. Uh, so uh, we've been doing artificial intelligence for the last six years, ordinary data for yeah, 30 years. Wow. <laughs> and tell us a little bit about what you are building and who you are building it for. Yeah, so um, my company is a consultancy. It's a, like a boutique consultancy, only 40 people, but you know, half of them have a PhD in some quantitative field. Uh, so they're really good at machine learning. And uh, our, our primary uh, segments are actually the enterprise segment. So we're working with the, you know, the largest enterprises, like large oil companies, banks, insurance companies, but we're also working with the smallest companies, startups. So we have an AI lab which helps AI-based startups succeed. And then we take, you know, uh, a small part of their equity as, you know, yeah. uh, instead of money. Yeah, it's yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's yeah. what equity. Yeah. yeah. So the biggest and the smallest. Absolutely. <laughs> I think it's very exciting that before we do the podcast, we're talking about the future and how passionate you are about AI and other technologies that are shaping our future. Would you mind begin share something with us about what is something that you believe about AI and the future that maybe majority people would disagree with you on? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> and so let me just start by saying that you know, I, I firmly believe that the future can be fantastic. It doesn't have to be, but it can be, and it's yes. up to us. You know, yes. we need to decide that. We need to make the good choices. Yes. We need to elect the good politicians. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, what would people disagree with me on? You know, I think that AI can actually solve pollution. You know, the only thing that makes me uh, positive about you know the future in terms of pollution is technology. Yes. So, if you look at you know, if you look at transportation, energy. And farming, those three areas, they amount to 66% of all CO2 emissions today. Yeah, they can all be addressed by AI. Mm -hmm. I mean, transportation can yes. be electric and autonomous. Yeah, it's going that way. Yeah. And some countries, like my own, more than 60% of all new cars are electric. And in a few years, they're going to be autonomous as well. Energy is going to be renewable. Solar will be, you know, the cheapest energy source, definitely. Yeah. And all transportation, all urban transportation, will be electric and autonomous. And looking at farming, you know, there's a lot of things happening on the farming side. You wouldn't think so, but farming is actually really high tech. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that's coming is uh, hydroponic farming. Mm -hmm. So that means that you're doing farming indoors. Right. You're using 99% less soil. 90% less water, no pesticides because it's not indoors. Yeah. So, temperature, water, energy, everything is controlled by AI. Yeah, monitored and so that they can twist, like, from the data and make decisions exactly. right there. Exactly. And this, this actually makes, you know, um, hydroponic farming is 300 times more efficient than ordinary farming. So right now, they're reaping, you know, uh, like a price premium on yeah. that. Yeah. Going forward, this is going to be a commodity. And then prices are going to fall dramatically. Yes. So, and, and it's also, yeah. you know, solving the climate crisis because uh, ordinary farming yeah. is really inefficient. You use a lot of tools. And of course, uh, you have also farting cows yeah. <laughs> emitting CO2 emissions Absolutely. front yeah. and back. So yeah. that, that's not good either. So actually, I think that AI can solve at least a large part of the pollution problem. Absolutely. Wouldn't that be fantastic? I think so. I think yeah, so I think so too. <laughs> because I saw this documentary from Netflix saying that if we don't take 
action or do something about uh, the CO2 emission that we have are doing right now, I think maybe in 20 or 30 years, it would be a luxury even for our kids in the future generation to even go for a walk and enjoy the sun and the air that we exactly. are taking things for granted now. Yeah, exactly. right? Which is taking a step back. I think there's a perfect alignment here with what a Meso Next Bridge is doing and also a podcast called The Future Hour is that we are a group of people, and I'm sure that there are many, many other people out there in the world that believe that throughout history that human being has been making good and important decisions over and over again. And when those decisions are being done, the destiny of humanity actually change or shifts, and most mm-hmm. of the time for the better. That's mm-hmm. why we have what we have today, the civilization and the Absolutely. things that we have accomplished, the harmony, the international trade, the technology, the blockchain, the AI. So, and I believe that we have such similar belief here that similar interests that we share that a group of dedicated individuals who are so confident and positive about the future can really change the world for the better. Yeah. With the help of technology. Absolutely. You know, I'm, I'm so confident that AI and exponential technology will change uh, the world for the better, you know, and in a lot of ways. I mean, we could also talk about medicine or disease. I mean, why do we have disease? Maybe disease can be a thing of the past, you know, but then we have to, I mean, today, if you look at healthcare, it's not healthcare, you know, so to, to be honest, it's sick care. You know, it, it's reactive sick care. We need to move to proactive healthcare. And we can do that, you know, by not taking pills, but using sensors to monitor our health, you know. Absolutely. I mean, you probably have a smartwatch, a lot of the yeah. audience probably have smartwatches, yeah. smart gadgets. These gadgets are getting smarter and smarter. They're measuring more and more. So it's, they're measuring blood pressure. They're measuring insulin levels. They're measuring a lot of things, you know. And you have sensors to go in your underwear. You have sensors to go yeah. on your clothes. Yes. Sensors to go on your skin. And these sensors are now going under your skin, you know, into... Uh, under your skin, under in your arms, in your right. fingers. You know, I have four friends who have a, a chip right there, ah, and yeah. they're measuring a lot right. of data. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you need, and then the sensors will tell you you're doing it right or you're doing it wrong. But it will be proactively. Yeah. So making you do the right choices. You know, I probably shouldn't have had that beer that I had 30 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> if I had the sensor, it would say, yeah. "Well, you should have water instead because yeah. you are a bit uh, dehydrated." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that makes all the difference. And actually, going into the future, not, not the distant future, but you know, right. like 2029, 20, you will also begin to see nanobots yes. injected into your bloodstream, you know, keeping you safe, you know, keeping viruses at bay, even fighting cancer, you know, keeping congestion out of your blood vessels. And that's fantastic. And people don't know about this. I mean, nanobots are just, you know, very tiny robots. Yes, absolutely. One nanometer. Yeah. So, 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 way yeah. tinier than this. So, what, how, how, yeah, so how long is a nanometer? You know, a nanometer yeah. is the length that the nail of your finger yeah. grows yeah. in one second. Ah. So, think about that one. In one second. That wow. is small. That's absolutely, absolutely <laughs> so, tiny. Absolutely yeah. tiny. So, this will be an injection. It will be yeah. as ordinary as taking a vaccine. Now, of course, people don't know what the vaccines uh, contain either. Yeah. So, but this will keep you healthy. You know, it's, it's fantastic. And if you get the choice, do you want to be have the injection and be healthy, or do you, want, do you want to say no to the injection and maybe be sick or maybe have cancer? I mean, it's a it's a really easy choice. So it's not fantastic, you know, Yeah. Already, yes. already at this, you know, at this level today, yeah. nanobots have actually cured cancer in pigs. You know, wow. still at the experimental level. You know, nice. still at the research level, but you know. Give it six, seven, eight more years, and this will be fantastic. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I think this is a perfect time to pivot in conversation a little bit. Would you mind share with us, and especially the audience out there, that maybe some of those has been a little bit skeptical about AI, about how they might shift the world that they are used to? Would you mind share with us a few key points for them to eliminate those doubts or be a little bit more open-minded about, let's say, the data, the privacy, and things along those lines? Yeah. No, I think there's a, there's a lot of 
right out there, you know, uh, concerning new technology, AI, and all that. And of course, Hollywood is partly to blame. You know, with movies like uh, Matrix and so, Terminator, and all that. Right? Yeah. You know, but this is this is Hollywood. You know, yeah. we are nowhere near that. In my view, we're not going to get there either, because you know, it isn't the algorithms that decide; it's us, the human beings, that decide. At least for now, yeah. and we need to make the right choices now, Absolutely. going forward. So people are also afraid about you know robots or AI taking their job, mm -hmm. and yes, uh, robots and algorithms will do a lot of jobs and a lot of tasks going forward. But that means that you don't have to do them. No, I mean I have a robot lawnmower. Mm -hmm. I don't have to do the lawnmowing anymore. Absolutely. That's fantastic, Absolutely. you know. I have a robot vacuum cleaner. Mm -hmm. That's great. I don't have to do the vacuuming anymore. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. It's a good thing. Mm -hmm. And I mean, if you're a if you're a bus driver, there will be autonomous buses. You don't have to do that job anymore. Absolutely. No, it's actually a good thing. Yes. But of course, you do need income. Everyone needs income. You, know, you need food. You need uh, housing. You need everything. So that will probably be solved by universal basic income. Absolutely financed by taxation of the hyper-profitable companies like Facebook that doesn't pay taxes almost at all today. You know, they need to be taxed. You know, people don't like taxation, but to a certain extent, taxation is kind of a mechanism just to redistribute money, which is good. I mean, I think Jeff Bezos has enough money, so maybe he should share something of that money with the people who don't have so much money, who don't have income maybe who are being you know automated away and incidentally jeff bezos and amazon is a good example because amazon actually have 110,000 robots in their warehouses those jobs used to be done by people yeah they're laid off so he should actually be paying like a robot tax mm. to redistribute that mm. good point great point actually. that's yeah it's probably again it's probably going to be uh, something that people maybe don't agree with but I think this is the right way to look at it. Yeah. I mean, Jeff Bezos, magnificent guy, great leader, does a perfect job. He deserves to be rich, yeah. but maybe not as rich as he is. Moving on, what do you think about within the next year or two, in 2022, in 2023, the most exciting thing for you when it comes to AI? Well, you know, I, I like to look even further ahead to 2029, uh, but you know, uh, but the reason for that is that you know then you'll have a lot of change. You know, then you can see and you can do all the uh, you know the necessary choices and uh, funding and allocations and all that. But of course, if you look at what's coming in 2029, this will also tell you what's coming next year and the year after. But it's really hard to say if it's coming next year or in 2024. You know, that that you know that depends on the adoption of you know the audience and the consumers. But you know, I think that one of the areas uh, where people don't know that AI is really, really good is in uh, in understanding text. So I mean, we have seen that AI is fantastic in you know understanding pictures. I mean, you you can go on Instagram and have like a filter. That's really advanced machine learning, but made you know uh, for a silly game. Yeah. When it comes to text, uh, AI hasn't been that good. But the last, let's say, like 18 months, it has been improving dramatically. And it's going to improve also going forward. So my company has actually been doing a project with the International Red Cross, looking wow. at uh, all the uh, free text reports coming in due to COVID. And you know, this is one of the largest organizations on the planet. So they have 165,000 offices around, around the world. They all send free text reports yeah, into yeah. their main office in Geneva. Right. And they have to be read manually. Wow. That doesn't work. Yeah. So we were in, um, taken in to see if we can automate this. So we worked with you know, cutting edge uh, natural language processing. And after some months, uh, we managed to get algorithms on an accuracy of the same level as human beings, which is fantastic. Absolutely. You know, sometimes people think that AI needs to be you know, way better than humans, but in this case, it's good enough that it's at the same level as humans, but then you can automate, and then you can read all the reports, like that. 
and then they can respond, yeah. which they have been doing based on our algorithm. So that's uh, you know, and it's also a fun project you know to have been doing, and uh, it's uh, it's really fulfilling to use your competence into a greater good. I think so. We we like those projects. That sounds very yeah. fun. That sounds very fun. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I read about somewhere that. Uh, and I will what you mentioned earlier when it comes to medicine and in the future that AI will all in the future will probably right now AI will be able to free up the doctors for reading the x rays, right? Yeah. Even it gets to like ninety, I think by now ninety nine percent of correct rate. Even so even for the AI just to mark those one percent when it's not sure, even the doctor can free up ninety nine percent of his or her time and only look at the one percent that are very, very special, if you will, right? Yeah. And also connect with what you were saying earlier, of course, when it comes to AI taking the jobs, I also believe that it's going to take away a lot of those jobs that are, to be honest, at the end of the day, you don't even want to work those kind of jobs. And people will free up to be more creative. Maybe someone who was bus driver before, maybe his whole dream in his life, he want to write poetry. Exactly. Or exactly. some <laughs> cashier at the grocery store, she wants to write the next Game of Thrones or the next Harry Potter. And now, with the power of AI, with their help, that more and more creativity can be free up, and maybe that will actually, on the other aspect, lead to the next renaissance that we have on Earth, right? Because I truly believe that each person has so much potential that because of the way that society is being set up, that sometimes they had to believe that they had to pick something, do certain kind of responsibility just to sustain themselves with their life or the family, right? But with the help of technology, which is over and over again, has been happening throughout history for so, so, so long time, that we can do this another time and take things to such to the next level that be 10 times more creative, 100 times more efficient, put things a lot more fun. Yeah. I mean, we are so on the same page here. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, I mean, you could be my brother. <laughs> It'll be my pleasure. Yeah. Be my pleasure. Yeah, yeah. So actually, with that said, Lars, have you ever thought about to be a little bit, I'm sure, I'm sure, and I know that you are doing a lot of speeches already, uh, attending many uh, events, being a speaker. Have you thought about being just a little bit more in front of camera to position yourself more so as the industry thought leader, which I'm sure you already are? How do you feel well, about that? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I think I'll uh, have to say uh, yes, thanks. Uh, of course. I mean, this is, you know, it's, it's not like, at least for me, this was not something that I just decided, you know, let's be the industry thought leader in AI. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, AI and exponential technology is my passion. Absolutely. So, when you have a passion, you don't care about how much time you use, because you just have, you just enjoy yourself. You, know? you just consume information, yes. take in the information, yes. talk to interesting people, you know, challenge your own thoughts mm -hmm. and all that. So, uh, I, I, you know, I, I try to, I try to talk to as many people as possible. You know, uh, I mean that's why I attended uh, yeah. this, this event. So I've been keynoting on the AIBC. I've been keynote, keynoting on on MedTech. Yeah. Uh, so I, I'd like to reach out to as many people as possible because, especially with this you know, kind of positive uh, message that the world can be a lot better than it is today Absolutely. if we use technology wisely. No, and that I think is the main message. So, but you no, know, I'm I'm from Norway, which is a small country. I mean, we don't have like 300 million uh, inhabitants like the US. Uh, we have like four mil five million. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's uh it's really hard to be the global thought leader coming from Norway. Then it has, I, I mean, you could be in skiing perhaps, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really hard to be that in, in AI. But uh, you know, I, I try to be, and uh, but only to you know get the message out. I appreciate that. And I think even in the past, maybe not so easy, like I mentioned, but however, again, because of technology, because of the distribution from the YouTube, from Spotify, it becomes easier and easier. Maybe it's probably now is the best time, right? Because more people on the internet, people are more, you assume someone right now at the events, right? Um, I think that one of, one of the time American people spending on a podcast has already doubled within the last few years. Yeah. Right. And the podcast is so hot in America, it becomes people listen to less music because people are so tired of listening to music at home because during the quarantine, much, much more people are sharing podcasts or listening to podcasts at the gym. They are driving and commute, commuting, like say, uh, commuting from within Los Angeles or within New York. 
they love to listen to more of the podcast. And that is actually another way. Technology brings us much more possibility of distribution and making influence among people. So I think maybe that's something will be very interesting for you to you know keep in mind and see how things go, right? Because I generally really very much enjoy our conversation. Yeah, well, oh, thank you very much. No, I, I enjoyed it as well, and uh, I definitely think you're right. So it probably comes down to time. You know? Yes. How much time do you have? And you know, I I'm. I have a hard time saying no to things, so that means I'm grown into a lot of different projects. Fair enough. And <laughs> as long as it's something that I enjoy, that I see that you know it's kind of a missing part of a puzzle, I just say I just say yes. Yes. And then it happens. But you know, of course, I mean, you only have 24 hours a day, so something got to you. Yeah. <laughs> something. Unfortunately, something has to say. You know, for example, my breakfast. I actually, don't really because of the amount of work I do. I actually, you already skip breakfast, so that I can have morning time even for me to meditate a little more or to read or to do some productive work in the morning so definitely can relate with that so yeah. with that said Lars could you share with us where can other people find out more about your company let's say maybe LinkedIn or you guys on social media or YouTube things along those lines or website yeah absolutely I'm uh, super active on, on LinkedIn so you'll find me there uh, like, I'm posting just about every day or at least right. numerous times uh, every week uh, you can, of course, find us on our website, uh, yes. which is amestonextbridge.no. Okay. And uh, Amestle also has a YouTube channel uh, where we posted you know, videos from some of our projects, like the, uh, no, not the Red Cross one, but we posted one with very, uh, yeah. we had this project where we decoded what bees or how bees communicate to each other within the beehive. So I, I would encourage you to look at that one, that's super well. cool. And the other one is a case where we uh, make synthetic cancer data so that it can actually be shared without sharing any personal information, which is, yeah, again, super interesting. So uh, you'll find those and, and more videos on, on our YouTube channel. Amazing. Well, Lars, thank you so, so much for taking the time to take this interview today. I must reach out and we will do more of this a little more often in the short future, okay? I would definitely love that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Such, such a pleasure. Thank you so much. Absolutely my All pleasure. Right. Thank, Thank you very you. much. All right, bye.